Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome in to another class guide for Lost Ark Western release. Today, we are playing on my Soul Fist. Uh, so this is Soul Fist, um, and we are basically going to go over the mechanics, the gameplay, what you can expect from Endgame, how the Soul Fist fits into group play, um, PvP, PvE, that sort of thing. Um, and basically just how the class works, including class engravings. What we will not be going over today is uh, advanced tactics, how to build it, what skills to use. We're not gonna do that details. So this is gonna be an overall guide for what Soul Fist is or Soul Master in other regions. Um, and it might help you decide whether you wanna play it, uh, what you can expect. And if you're just gonna be maining Soul Fist going into your first character, then you have an idea of, of what the Soul Fist is all about. So. We're gonna jump into the basics and just go over the mechanics and talk about how the character works. Uh, and that's gonna be the guide today. But first, if you have any questions or comments for me, you'll find me live every day on twitch.tv forward slash dry bear. Who knows? I might even be streaming right now. So what is the Soul Fist? The Soul Fist is basically Dragon Ball Z. Uh, this character did not, when they were making this character, they did not hold back on making this essentially just a character straight out of Dragon Ball Z. So your two ultimates is a Kamehameha where your dad comes and helps you shoot it when your arm is broken and you're fighting Cell in the Cell games. Uh, and then you also have a a literal spirit bomb as your other ability. So these are your two ultimates and you just, people of Earth, send me your power. You'll see that there's a lot of references to like, you know, KO Ken and Key Energy, Super Saiyan, things like that. Um, and you have a lot of like attacks and things like that. So there's a lot that goes into this. If you want to feel like you're in Dragon Ball Z or you have that kind of, you know, a Z fighter aesthetic, Soul Fist is for you. Um, so let's go over the basics of the class and how it works. So this is the basic attack. It is a melee, um, it is a melee martial artist cl class, um, just like the others. Uh, however, it does have a ranged melee attack. Keep in mind that the basic attack for some classes is completely irrelevant and almost never gets used. For other classes, sometimes they mix it in, but in general, most of your damage and the lion's share of what you do is gonna come from your abilities, your positioning, and your identity. But it is nice to know that you have this little attack. It's useful for breaking walls and objectives and things in encounters, um, which is also there. Uh, the movement ability is unique for every class as well. So we're gonna do our little dash here. This one is a pretty quick dash. It does have super armor all immunity uh, and it has a nine second cooldown, which is on the longer end. The movements in the game have a, a, a range of like five second cooldown to 10 second cooldown. Um, so we'll have to be uh, pushing through that. So that's going to be it. Um, and let's go over the identity. The identity is a mechanic set or a passive that uniquely identifies what a class is and is unique to that class. So the key state uh, in the translation, they call it hype. So it's like hype one, hype two, hype three. Uh, key explosion, how it translates, or, or what name they're going to give in the West, I'm not sure. Uh, but it is basically your passive. When you are out of it, it regenerates. And then when you have it, there's three stages to it. It's kind of just like K.O. Ken from Goku in Dragon Ball Z. But you activate it first. You get to uh, K.O. Ken or hype level one. Um, it's 90 second duration. You re rebuild your energy from here. Uh, and then you have a faster skill recovery speed, a faster attack speed, and your damage goes up. Um, this one lasts the longest of the three. You can activate it again to get to KO Ken level two or hype level two. Uh, and then you get uh, shorter, it's less than half the duration. You get more energy, you get higher amounts of skill recovery, attack speed and damage. And then you enter into KO Ken level three, which is the final one, which you can see by the bar is going down very quickly, uh, but it gives you the highest amount of bonus uh, which is super great. So that's kind of just, you'll spend, depending on your class engraving, you'll spend uh, time just moving between the three Kaoken uh, hype states um, and you kind of build up there. So it is this uh, nice passive that will affect how you play uh, constantly and you're managing this resource as you go along. You can see it goes into a refractory period where it, it will reset and then have to reset um, and based on what class engravings you have uh, will change. On top of that, the abilities themselves um, are some that have like a good mix of range and melee. Even though it is, again, a martial artist, it has some of the, the most range out of all the martial artists. Uh, you can see that there's just, you know, a lot of ways you can kind of manifest your energy and, uh, you know, have different ways to go into that. They have a nice flow. They're not as quite, quite as fast as the Lance Master or the Ward Answer, 
Um, they're not as slow as the Scrapper uh, either, so they kind of have this middle ground between the two, and generally have a very flowy kind of reactive, control-heavy style uh, to them. In PvP, they are um, a little bit more on the control side because they have they have a lot of interrupts, and these interrupts can happen at range as well. So a lot of times you can be fully CC'd by a Soul Fist in, in PvP. So they have good damage, as all classes do in the game. Um, and depending on their hype level and how they're using their passive, you can get some different reactions there. But uh, they, they do have this nice middle ground where they're very flexible. They have a lot of tools in their toolkit, um, and they can be used in almost all situations. Um, their passive stats, this little key energy bar here, there is one thing to keep in mind. Um, I don't know if I can actually spend enough here. Probably not when I'm in hype, yeah? So we have this. If you end up spending the whole meter, um, which will be important later when we talk about... Uh, so you can see I just triggered a zero, which means that this turned orange. I can't use any of my abilities right now. So there is like a penalty, like a lot of the, the, the passive uh, underlying mechanics for the Soul Fist is managing your key. If you ever go to zero without any class engravings, um, it'll force a reload, which means that during that period, you can't use abilities. So you kind of want to get as close as you can to zero, uh, but you want to make sure you're paying attention to it without certain class engravings to build that in. Um, here are the awakening skills, which can be thought of as your ultimate abilities. Uh, let's go ahead and reset those now. The one that gets used the most is probably this world annihilation. This is basically just spirit bomb from Dragon Ball. Um, it is... Probably one of the most meme-worthy abilities in the entire game. Um, it is exceptionally slow. And when you use it, you stand still. You are just standing here, and a boss is gonna murder you while you're standing there. And you can see it takes an exceptionally long period of time to land on the ground. So, the, the gameplay around using Spirit Bomb, your World Annihilation, is being able to predict where the your enemy is going to be, whether it's PvP or PvE. If the bosses move a bunch, you want to make sure, like, if this boss is going to move over here, you move it here, and if the boss moves into it. This is, I think, the highest, hardest hitting ability in the entire game. I think fully buffed, uh, hitting right in the right situation, if you just want to look at the highest number, I think this ability beats every ability in the entire game. However, it is also one of the slowest, if not the slowest. So, there is a lot of skill in knowing where the monster's gonna be and be able to hit it right. Sometimes you throw this up and the boss runs away and your whole team gets to watch you just channel Spirit Bomb into nothingness or you hit it and it does ridiculous mind earth shattering damage uh, and you, you you spike up to MVP. So it's pretty cool. It's a little polarizing in that, in that regard. Second awakening, the second ultimate, as you can see by the icon is essentially when Gohan broke his second arm against Cell in the Cell games when he was Super Saiyan 2, and his dad appeared as in an astral form to help him shoot his Kamehameha to end the cell uh, to save the earth is essentially what this is. So you activate it, it's a hold ability. You're gonna hold this down and Kamehameha. And then at the end, your Goku, but not Goku, appears behind you and gives you even more of a blast to shoot it. Um, this one has nowhere near as much damage as the Spirit Bomb, but as you can see, is a little bit more usable in that you can kind of aim it uh, and you all get some extra damage out of it. Plus, it looks cool. So that's the awakening. That's the identity, the abilities, the attacks, uh, and all that. The last thing to go over is the uh, class engravings um, because these are something that you will get only at endgame. You, you have to farm them and unlock them, um, and you'll be able to uh, equip these depending on your play style, um, but they do require a lot of farming, and these won't really make a difference for you until you are... Um, working on your end game build. But they are important to know because they can be very build defining. Every class in the game has access to engravings. You'll see them here. You collect um, instances of these engravings through your uh, accessories, your ability stone, and then you have two slots on your equipment where you can equip them. Um, all the classes in the game have access to all of these engravings. These are general common engravings. I'm not going to go through which ones are best or worst because that's likely going to change when we get our Western release. However, every class in the game has access to two class engravings, and these are only available to that class and are very powerful and usually very build defining. They change how you play pretty significantly. Um, the two for, um, for Solfus, as with most classes, are kind of polar opposites. Some classes have ones that are just do more good, and you can use them both if you want. Um, but usually, especially with the newer classes, they're very different and in most cases mutually exclusive, which means you don't want to use them together or you physically can't use them together. 
So the first one um, in the Russian client that I'm on right now is called Heaven Defying Body. Uh, it will probably uh, most likely have a very different name when it goes into a Western client. So just know that it's going to be called something different. But from now on, there is only one level of your KO Ken, your hype meter, your key master, whatever it is. The third. So instead of being able to go one, hype level one, and you have this long meter. Two, hype level two, and you have this long meter. Three, hype level three, short meter, but super strong. When you have this class engraving equipped, you no longer have three, you only have one. So it's not necessarily, uh, the gameplay shifts from focusing on being able to manage your hype states, get the most out of them, use them at times where you'll be able to benefit and time them up with your abilities and you know be hype level three if you're gonna use spirit bomb, things like that. Uh, it goes from that to on demand, I will use my hype level three when I need it and when I, when I possibly have it. And then while you're in strength, your key regeneration rate is super high, increased by 200% at, at, at all levels. And then your damage dealt is increased by more. So it gives you this really, you, you basically just go hype level three, line everything up, and it's more about getting everything in, kind of like the war dancer, getting all your damage in, in that window, and then it goes down, and then you don't have to worry about it again until it comes back up again. So that is the first engraving. So you can see it kind of changes the class pretty significantly. And the second one is the opposite in that the energy reserve key does not decrease below unity, which means that it doesn't go below zero, which means you can't, if you hit zero, you won't hit that negative effect where you can't use abilities until it reaches a thousand again. Um, so that goes away. However, also additional effects that increase the rate of its recovery no longer work. So you won't, like you don't get the negative of hitting zero and not being able to use abilities, but you can't increase the rate that it recovers at all. But when you're lower than 30% energy, you deal more damage. So the idea is that you wanna stay below 300 at all times. You don't get a, a negative effect for having zero, but you don't get more and you can't increase the rate at all. So it's more like uh, you're more focused on managing your key and you can see when I use it, uh, if I use, if I dump all my abilities really, really quickly, I can dump it. And then now I force that refractory period where I cannot know, I cannot use abilities, but I can increase this amount and manage that so I don't go to zero. But with this class engraving, the play style shifts a little bit to, uh, you can, you can go as low as you want, use your abilities properly and try to maintain under 30% for that extra damage bonus. So you can see that it's a little bit different of a strategy. And that is Soul Fist. Uh, I think it's it's a nice blend between utility, ranged, melee. You have a lot of different tools in your tool belt. Uh, it's not as fast as the War Dancer or the Lance Master. It's nowhere near as slow uh, or as heavy as the Scrapper. Uh, you get a nice mixture of everything. And so if you want to be the, you know, kind of like a jack of all trades, uh, super useful in PvP, generally a good CCer uh, with good burst damage in the right moment. You can hit from range if you want. If someone gets in your face, you can fight in melee. And then if you want to be the guy or the girl or you know the they whatever you you know whatever whoever you are that lands the world's best soul bomb or uh you know a spirit bomb that lands does a bunch of damage great if you missed you missed it's, it is what it is but that's soul fist uh and so hopefully this was helpful for you in deciding whether you're going to play the class um and uh figure out what class you're gonna make. If you enjoyed yourself today, leave a like down below. You can support me and my work on Patreon and view Patreon exclusive content, link in the description. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.